Okay, this is continuing my analysis of the uh, reality checks for the manifesto launches of both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party. On my screen here we have the talking head who appeared in both of those videos, um, the Conservative one and the Labour one. Um, he is um, a gentleman called wait for it here we go uh, Paul Johnson who is a director of the independent think tank the Institute for Fiscal Studies now so far so good um, 80,000 pounds a year for an uh, he wasn't introduced they didn't say who he was in these independent expert checks he just appeared looking expert uh, but I thought well let's find out who he is and uh, who he represents, and he represents a think tank, um, as I say, which is the Institute of Fiscal Studies. Um, so I've done a couple of searches on the Institute for Fiscal Studies, uh, and um, this is what they say about themselves. Um, they were founded in 1969, established the Independent Research Institute, uh, So you can, I'll, I'll put these links in and you can look them up yourself, but just a few comments. I've done some searches on their website to see how much these guys know about money creation, whether they're orthodox economists, which basically means that they are uh, indoctrinated into the um, religion of Queen Tina, she who must be obeyed, there is no alternative to Hayekian um, neoliberal small state economics etc um, so I searched on their site for debt to see what they had about debt if there's anything about debt money um, I'm going to look in a bit more debt uh, information on this but um, uh, the other thing that I searched was money uh, obviously um, and uh, looked on their site to see um, some of the other stuff about uh, what they do about public spending um, what the, you know, really, what, whether there is a political edge to what they say, um, and whilst it might not be party political, um, I think it's fair to assume that it's um, uh, substantially neoliberal. Now, this is their briefing note: BN one nine eight, tax revenue. Where does the money come from, and what are the next government's challenges? This was published on the first of May and was referred to by was his name Paul Johnson. Um, and he actually said in the labour analysis of the video um, that the Labour Party share of national uh, of gross domestic product from tax take on their current budget proposal would be the highest for 70 years. Now, let's check his mathematics on that. The actual briefing note produced by his colleagues Helen Miller and Barra Roundtree actually says um, that uh, the tax take is the highest since the early 1980s. Um, so the briefing note provides background material for the 2017 general election. Under current plans, the share of national income raised in taxes is set to reach its highest level since the early 1980s. Now, they've got a, a graph here showing how in 1980 uh, that take was um, under 35%, um, and it came down in the early 90s quite low, and then has been rising stepwise ever since uh, to its present level at about 34%. Um, the figure that is quoted I think is virtually meaningless outside of any Daddy. context and if you look at the barn the, the Rummel videos you'll see that um, darling I'll be there in a minute okay yeah. if you look at the Rummel video uh, regarding um, the overall level of tax take isn't really what's relevant it's what it is actually spent on um, and the uh, incentives for business to invest and Rummel goes on to say of course if there are those incentives to invest um, and corporation tax is lower what you have to be careful uh, 
about is to make sure that you don't create a tax environment which provides a place for people to evade their personal income tax um, because uh, this isn't about the budget per se, it's about aggregate demand in the economy and ensuring that there's enough money circulating so that producers can produce as much as they're capable of producing to meet the needs, whether those are of the necessaries of life but or the luxuries of joke. life. Daddy, I got the funny joke. Okay, so back to this theme of um, checking the checkers. Uh, who watches the watchers? Um, who who observes the e fours, the e fours of debt? Um, that's what uh, Schumpeter um, characterised um, bankers as e fours of debt, uh, which uh, is a reference back to ancient Greece and. Uh, the Spartans had two kings, and above them were the, the E fours, and the E fours uh, were from the community, and actually were the overarching observers of the what the kings did. Um, and uh, what's interesting about that is that so then, who watched the E fours, and the E fours famously. Uh, uh, betrayed um, Sparta to the to the Persians. Um, there's a scene in the uh, uh, is it a film. Is it called Seventy Eight? The one where the Spartan troops stop the Persians at the path. It's quite a good film actually. But anyway, here we go. Paul Johnson. So who is Paul Johnson? This talking head that appeared on the BBC, and more importantly, what did he say? Um, well. I took a transcript off uh, my video which um, has after the two uh, Beersley Rummel speeches um, the uh, full video of the talking heads and the uh, reality check from the BBC site and so that's here um, and so let's just go first to the um, Tory uh, reality check where Paul Johnson makes his entrance at 41.03. So if I go to 41.03 here, just to show you how this is done, 41.01 and press play. And the legislative promise, of course, is an increase in income tax not the Tories. You look at this manifesto. So here he is here, 4107. Uh, you look at this manifesto. So the transcript is generated by speech recommendation in YouTube. And then what I did was copy and paste that into a document and then corrected the translation errors um, to get to what um, Paul Johnson then says. So uh, you can watch the videos yourself and I'm just going to concern myself with what um, uh, Paul Johnson is saying. So it says about the Tory manifesto that um, there's very little actually made in way of promises of not increasing taxes, uh, which is an important point um, because uh, his own uh, organization uh, produced this document which I referred to earlier um, which is the next government's challenges and it, it actually says that there's um, under current pans the share of national income raised in taxes is set to reach its highest level since the early 80s and regardless of who gets in um, that's regardless of whether one wants taxes overall to be cut, this is a bad policy and should not be repeated in any of the upcoming manifestos. Um, you can read that document, I'll put, put the link in there. Um, so, well, 
what did it go on to say? Uh, triple left on pensions, which they're getting rid of. And there's lots about that, and that is uh, it's a very mean-minded policy, I think it's fair to say. Um, so, uh, 2.5 going to... Well, actually, he doesn't say much at all on the Tory thing. He's just brought in and... Uh, Whilst there isn't a pro there is an absolute promise not to increase income tax and that's insurance and so on, what you've got here is a pretty modest set of proposals which probably aren't going to require terribly much in the way of tax increases. One big conservative promise in the So he's really came out and said nothing much to worry about with the Tories and then this video leaves with the final message from David Davis which is you need Theresa May to secure Brexit um, and it's it's really sort of a, a project fear don't scare, scare the horses sort of thing. Um, when he makes his reappearance in the Labour uh, video it's a different story altogether uh, so he makes his reappearance there at 46.11. So let's just go to 46.11 just to show that this works. Um, stop playing that. 48.6 B out, 48.6 B in. So does that add up? And they're suggesting a fifty. So here's Paul Johnson asking, answering the question, does it add up? Um, like he would know. Uh, so let's have a look then what he says. Um, he poisons the well almost immediately by saying, look, the tax burden of this country will be the highest level it's been in about 70 years. Um, and, but there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, well, let's look at this uh, gentleman's background um, to see what he bases that on. Well, we know immediately uh, that... Um, from what he said in uh, the 70 year thing is not actually in accordance with, with what uh, um, his colleagues say or have said in, in you know, what one assumes is their reasoned opinion of uh, what the current state of um, monetary policy is according to their own um, economics viewpoint uh, Institute for Fiscal so Studies on um, Wikipedia but then Paul Johnson on Wikipedia and if you look at um, his background um, he's basically a civil servant um, who's had a career in the neoliberal Blairite um, uh, term in office largely um, and uh, I think it's fair to assume that his economics world view is what I would call uh, neoliberal and all all bow to Queen Tina uh, she must be obeyed there is no alternative so I might be being unfair to the guy but I don't think so um, So, I mean, he goes on to make a bunch of woolly s statements apart from that. Uh, but what I think is interesting is when you then get down into the detail of um, government spending as a percentage of GDP, and you can find these things just by quite easily looking, um, and you can see that... Uh, government spending as a percentage of GDP since 1996, okay, it went down, then it started going up, uh, but it peaked actually in 2009, which was after the, the crash, and then this is the Tory austerity here, um, where you can see it's still at historically, you know, well, high levels, I suppose, um, Uh, historical government spending, uh, real terms, you can see how from the late 60s it 
increases their Effectively, I think what it's fair to say is that Paul Johnson was wheeled on to put forward this meme, uh, which is very, very real in the current election campaign, which is claiming that the Conservatives are different from a Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn, and that under Jeremy Corbyn the amount of taxation is going to go through the roof. Um, and that is simply not borne out by the facts. Now, facts are not important to religious ideologies, and neoliberalism is a religious ideology. I suggest that this um, independent expert on the BBC is a priest of neoliberal ideology, um, and uh, what we actually see is that in the current constitution of the British state, um, and the European state, and the um, really within the Washington Consensus is actually a religious doctrine embedded in government and uh, it was considered prudent many years ago going back to the founding fathers of, 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 of the uh, USA uh, the idea of separation of church and state uh, that is something which um, goes back in British history as well, uh, actually to the um, English Civil War and uh, the regicide of Charles I and uh, the idea that um, you know the divine right of kings doesn't really apply anymore, uh, except it, there's a divine right of a queen and the queen is Queen Tina, she must be obeyed there is no alternative and uh, if we're going to get back to a secular democratic um, form of government where voting populations get to choose between um, political uh, ways of doing things uh, we simply must get rid of this single um, established church within government in the West and the established church within government in the West is the church of neoliberalism and uh, of Queen Tina, she who must be obeyed. I mean that it's so uh, evident from looking at those two supposed reality checks, a bit of a background check and you know there you go. 